Hello, boys and girls. My name is Pastor Tammy, and this is my friend Whitey. How you doing, Whitey? Hi, I'm doing good. Hey, let's play a little game of peekaboo. Peekaboo? Yeah, you ready? Uh, okay. Peekaboo! <laughs> I love peekaboo. Peekaboo! <laughs> Do it again. Peekaboo! <laughs> hey, guess what else? What? I just joined my streamer praise team. You want to see me worship with? Uh, okay, I'll yeah. look at that Hold too. Hold on. All right. I just gotta get my streamer. He's doing Here we streamer go. praise team. Here we go. Okay. Wow! <laughs> Whoa! Praise Jesus! I love those streamers. Praise Oops, drop it. the Lord. Where, where'd you go? Oh, okay, there we oh, go. Oh, my soul. soul. <laughs> Woo! Woo! You Feels know what? Good. Keep that same energy. We're about to go to the service. Come on, let's praise our way in. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Kid Life. Wanna welcome my friends? Welcome to Kid Life. Welcome to Kid Life. Come on, pray. Let's pray. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we're just so happy to be able to gather together as one family to lift up your holy name. God, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for breath in our lungs so we can even praise you. We give you all glory, all honor, all praise. Bless my friends, oh God. Do a supernatural thing in our lives, oh God. We just can't wait to see what you're gonna do today in this service. It's in your precious son, Jesus' name. We all say amen. Hello there, everybody. My name is Josh. I'm excited to be your host in this series called I'm in Trouble. Yeah, that's right. Trouble. Now the world is full of trouble. You done? Okay, good. Like I was saying, the world is full of trouble. Like this guy. Aww. And this guy. And these guys. And throughout this series, we're going to discuss what the Bible has to say about trouble. The Bible is boring. Uh, no, it isn't. Have you ever read it? Uh, no, I wouldn't want to read it. It's boring. Blech. Everyone in the Bible is a fake little goody two-shoes. <laughs> well, that's not true. The Bible is full of stories of people that got in trouble. And not only that, it can teach us a lot about how to get out of trouble. And to help me teach you about this, I brought some friends along. Say hi to Amos. Jimmy Don. Oh, hey, y'all. Hey, do you know if Cheetos are a fruit or a vegetable? Professor Hermes. Oh, my good sir, uh, Cheetos are neither fruit nor vegetable. They are actually a subspecies of giraffe. <laughs> For real? Nope, not true. And last but not least, you've met Gordy. Uh, hi, or whatever. What's the Wi-Fi password on board? I'll give it to you later. First, we gotta talk about a guy named David. I once knew a fella named David. We fought together in the war. Oh, cool. Which war? You know which war. <laughs> Triggered. Chill out, guys. Amos, I doubt even you're old enough to know this David. I'm talking about King David. Yeah, the guy that went up against Goliath. <laughs> the giant slayer. He was one of the greatest kings to have ever lived in world history. And if there's one thing David knew about, it was trouble. Uh, sorry, but what does a super rich king know about trouble? He wasn't always a king, and not everybody liked him. A lot of people wanted him dead. In fact, in Psalm 69, David wrote that he had more enemies than hairs on his head. But well, then he should have shaved his head. Uh, I'm sorry, what? If he'd have shaved his head, he would have been smooth like a dolphin. <laughs> And everybody loves dolphins. Now that is 100% scientifically true. My great aunt is a dolphin. Observe. That scarred me for life. No, shaving his head would have not made his enemies go away. David was in serious trouble, and it looked like there was no way out. So what does David do? Does he fight back? Does he freak out? Does he run away and hide? Will his enemies win? And has anybody seen my teeth? You're gonna find out all about that in today's lesson. Well, everything except Amos's teeth. Oh, but Lord, if not. Get ready to learn all about how God is faithful. Uh, let's say goodbye, Aunt Matilda. She is so majestic. 
you gotta know i am so excited about our brand new series called i'm in trouble we're talking about how in times of trouble god is faithful so every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know you tell them this even on my bad days god is faithful that's right god is faithful no matter what When we call on him for help, he hears us. Hello, God, can you hear me? Hello, he sure can, but you don't have to yell. Oop, I'm sorry. If you just pray and ask God for his help, he is always there to rescue you. God is always faithful. So every time today, somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. Even on my bad days, God is faithful. And that right there is what you gotta know. My name is Wiggy Pop, and I'll see you next time. Rock on! <laughs> hey kids, what time is it? Yeah! Epic Summer Dance Party Dance when the music's playing Freeze when the music stops Be ready for many games Get ready to hit the beach balls. Hit the beach balls and dodge the water balloons. Hit the beach balls, dodge the water balloons, and kick the soccer balls.
Ha! <laughs> 
wonderful to have you. Please hold your applause. You may be seated. Oh, thank you. So wonderful. Now, welcome back. I am the actor, and I am perhaps the greatest method actor of all time. And I'm not acting when I say that. Now, boys and girls, I do believe that you could perhaps be the greatest method actor of all. Oh, let's be serious. You'll probably never be as good as me. But anyways, I can help you out. All you need to do is learn today's power verse using method acting. Haha, -ha. today's power verse says, Great is his faithfulness, his mercies begin afresh each morning. Lamentations 3.23. What a wonderful, fantastic power verse. Now if there's one thing I've learned as the greatest method actor of all times, it's that the best way to memorize your lines, or the power verse in this instance, is to do it in character. So let's find out what today's character shall be. Let's see. Ah, yes! Today's character is a walrus with no teeth. Hmm. Acting, thank you. <laughs> Not that at all. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> Okay, boys and girls, everyone stand up and you're going to roar like a dinosaur and a T-Rex because they have short little arms and they're quite funny to look at. So everyone, let's say it together on the count of, oh, hold on. <clears throat> In character, roar on the count of three. One, roar, two, roar, three, roar. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Lamentations 3.23, roar! Acting, thank you, that was fantastic. I love that power verse, but I must be going. My coffee breath is getting to me. Acting, thank you, I have the freshest breath in town. See you later, boys and girls. Exit, stage, left. Hello, my friends, Pastor Anna here. Let's pray, let's talk to God. God, we just invite you into this time. We wanna know you more. Holy Spirit, I pray you would tell this story through me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, you can get out your Bibles if you want or look it up later. This story comes from Psalm 69, okay? The whole thing. And it was written by somebody you might've heard of his name is David. He's King David at this point. He used to be a shepherd boy. You might have heard of him. He battled a big giant named Goliath, but now he's king, okay? And he's writing the Psalms. Well, kings, they have it pretty good, don't they? Can you imagine? You can boss everybody around. You probably have everything you could think you want, king or queen. Well, this day was not a good day, though. Even kings and queens have bad days. And this day was really bad. And you can tell because let me tell you what King David wrote. <clears throat> he said, I have more enemies than I have hairs on my head. And he wasn't bald, guys. He had hair. So can you imagine that? He's saying, I have more enemies, people that are against me, than I have hairs on my head. And it gets worse. He says, thieves and liars are out to get me. He was in trouble. He, people, he, he felt like everybody was against him. Have you ever had a day like that where you felt like everybody was against you? Maybe everybody was mad at you. I remember one time in fifth grade, one of my good friends got mad at me and she got everybody else in fifth grade to, to hate me. And I felt like everybody hated me and they did at the time. And I cried a lot and it was a really, really bad time. But guess what? It didn't end there. It didn't end there. It's all good now. That's fifth grade girl drama. And it didn't end here for David either because of some wise things that David did. What did he do? Did he go complain to everybody and else and tell them, you know, and talk about those people? No, that would be a bad way to handle it. I've handled things that way before. Not good. That is sin. That is not good. Nope. He did something very wise, guys. He got down on his knees and he called out to God for help. God, help me. He knew that God would hear him, and he knew God cared, and he knew that God would help him. And do you think he did? 
Yes, he did. He rescued him. He rescued him from all those enemies. And then David did something else really wise. He thanked God. He gave praise and thanks to God. He knew where his help had come from and he thanked God for it. And we can learn so much. We're going to look at this today because guess what? We can do the same thing. And God loves us just as much as he loves David. So get ready. God is faithful. So God is faithful. Isn't that awesome? It is so true, guys. I knew God when I was a kid, and then I came, I was far away from God, came back to God when I was 20. Now I'm 50. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, God has always been faithful to me. I haven't always been faithful, but God has been faithful. He is faithful. It doesn't mean everything happens the way I want it. No, but God always takes care of us. And you know, we're his kids, guys. When we have a relationship with God, we are his kids. And we're going to get to that. So, but first I want to ask you this. Have you ever had a bad day? You ever had a bad day? I bet you have. I have. I remember I've had lots of bad days <laughs> and lots of good days. You know, I've had lots of good days. But I remember one specifically, I was pregnant with our first son, Ethan. We have three boys. Ethan was in my tummy, and um, and I was about to take off work for that year, and we didn't really have very much money, and um, and our air condition broke. We lived in Florida, and you really need air down there, and our electricity thing was broken, which cost a, was going to cost a lot of money. And at the same day, we had this big fruit rat. They had these rats in Florida that are like they call them fruit rats, so this big, and the the people put poison out like because um, to try to kill them, I guess. There'd be way too many of them. And they're kind of scary looking is all I'm going to tell you guys. But one had died in our attic where we couldn't get to. It was like inside, you know, like place. It wasn't an attic that you could just walk in. It was like, anyways. And it smelled so bad, <laughs> so bad. And when you're pregnant, you can like smell everything more. And then because it was dead, these flies, I had never seen them. They were so big, guys. And they were, they were everywhere. And I am like in tears. <laughs> oh God, that's just one. I've had many different ones. There's another time where my husband had just lost his job. Someone did him really wrong. Our heat broke and it was winter time, same day. Then I get on my bicycle because sometimes when I'm when I'm stressed, I like to just exercise because it just helps me get stressed out. And I got on my, my exercise bike, which was like a thousand dollar bike and the wheel, the wheel thing just broke off. You know, it's like that kind of thing. Seems like a lot of times bad things like to happen all at once. So anyways, so what do you do? What do we do when we have an awful day? I've definitely cried. I mean, but what do we, we can learn from King David, right? What he did was so wise, what we can do when I'm in trouble. When I'm in trouble, I can call on God. And you don't need fancy words, guys. Remember, we just talked about this a minute ago. We are his kids when we have a relationship. Now, just think, you have a kid, okay? And they they cry, help, right? What are you going to do? You're going to go and help them because they're your kid. Are, is it, are you going to help them because they're perfect? If they didn't get straight on, A's on the report card, you're going to go, eh, nah, I can't help you. You didn't get straight A's. No, they're your kid. You are you are going to help them. And here's, here's how David started his psalm. This is how bad it was. He was saying, save me, oh God. The floodwaters are up to my neck. So, and he wasn't in a real flood. He just felt like, like basically, I've got so much trouble. I feel like one more thing, I'm going to drown. You know what I mean? And guys, bad days are going to happen. Even if you, Maybe you hadn't had a bad day when I asked you before. The Bible promises, Jesus actually says, troubles are going to happen. But guess what? He said, in me, I got gotcha. you. And I have to, I've overcome all the troubles and the world, and I've took away the power from, for it to harm you. Doesn't mean you won't go through hard times, but I'm going to take care of you, basically. So we don't have to fear the hard times. And when we have the hard times, we cry out to God for help. And you don't even have to have all those words. You can just say, help, Daddy, help. To, to your spiritual daddy, okay? I've cried many times, help. You know, I've just gotten on my knees and 
just like that. And remember, we can do that. And you don't have to be perfect. And if, if you have blown or something, ask God for forgiveness first. That's what I, God, forgive me for that sin. Forgive me. Wash it. Come help me. I need your help. It shows that all the time in the Bible, the Israelites actually made a really bad choice. So God allowed something to come in their life to wake them up and they would cry out to God for help. And guess what? He would rescue them. Even though they had done some awful thing to make the bad thing happen, God would rescue them. And he loves us, guys. He cares. So when I'm in trouble, I can call on God. Next thing, when I call on God, he hears me. He does. You can know that. And here's Psalm um, 69, 33. David says, the Lord hears the cries of his needy ones. We're his. When we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, we are God's kids. We are his. And he hears our cries, God. Guys, God hears our cries. He does. And the last point we can learn from David, I will worship God for rescuing me. Psalm 69, 30 says, Then I will praise God's name with singing. I will honor him with thanksgiving. Always remembering who helped us. Because sometimes people can think it's that they did it, you know? And we just, we really need to learn that, guys. All of our help comes from God. And then, ha. Oh, it's a lot less weighty, right? All of our victories come from God. And if we fail, God's right there ready to pick us up. He cares and we can give him thanks for his help. God, thank you. Thank you for helping me, God. I know you're the one that did it and thank you. So guys, I'm telling you, if maybe you're there right now, maybe you're in a really tough time, cry out to him. He cares. He's going to be there. Might maybe not be exactly like the way we want or at the exact moment, but I'm telling you what, he's faithful. He's a faithful God. And maybe you're not in the hard time now, but when you get in that hard time, they'll come. Now you know what to do. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. God, I just thank you. Thank you that you're with us and thank you that you care and that we cry out to you. You are our daddy and you come and rescue us. Thank you, Father, that you see. You say you know how many hairs are on our head. And you care when people come against us. And I just ask for help for my friends right now. If they're going through a hard time or when they are going through a hard time, I pray you lift them just as you lifted David. God, hear their cry and help them. And I pray you give them a big hug right now in the room. Let them sense your presence and your power. And see, God, you are so real and you so love them more than they can even imagine. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Dude, I can't do anything right. No wonder no one likes me. What are you talking about? It's just a game. It's more than that. I'm doing horrible at school. I didn't make the soccer team. And no matter how hard I try, I can't get people to like me. Well, I like hanging out with you. I'm sorry you're having such a hard time. Why are you being so nice to me? I just broke your controller. Yeah, I know. But that's just stuff. It's not more important than friends. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? Because God thinks you're important. And so do I. So you're not mad at me? Nah, I forgive you. God's forgiven me for way more than a broken controller. What do you need forgiveness for? It seems like you've got it all together. Nope, I mess up all the time, but God is always there to forgive me. That's why he sent Jesus to die for my sins. Whoa, I haven't heard that before. You talk about God like he's your best friend. I don't think God will forgive me. He's more than my best friend. He's my savior. He can forgive you, and the cool part is that he's waiting for you to ask. Really? I've never talked to God. What do I say? It's easy. Just remember A, B, C. A is for admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B is for believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you're now right with God. C is for confess. Confess to others that Jesus is the leader of your life and your best friend. That sounds cool. Hey, uh, why don't you come to church with me this week? It's fun and you can hear more about Jesus. Thanks for the invite. Sure thing, but you still owe me a controller. <laughs> 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 
Well, that was our service for today. We had such an amazing time worshiping the Lord today. That was awesome! Awesome! And guess what? I invited a friend! You, you found a friend already? Yeah, he's a, he's a... Minnie, come here! He's a Hello, little guy. Uh, come here! Where's Minnie? <gasps> Look at me. Yeah, yeah, you gotta train up the younger generation, you know. I'm teaching him how to use be a praise streamer. Oh Here yeah. We go. Hold this, Minnie. Okay. Hickey. Minnie is little. Oh, his little. What? <laughs> okay, I know your little hands are very small. Hold on. I got an idea. Come here. I'm gonna wrap it around you. <laughs> Come on up, Minnie. Oh, oh. There it is. All right. Show them, Minnie. Show them, Minnie. Minnie is going. <laughs> Minnie is going. You're so little. Yeah. You did pretty good. Yeah, you Praise did. Praise the Lord. Woo. You did so good. <laughs> okay, we're about to go. Minnie's going to practice some more after we leave. So we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Praise. Hi, boys and girls. Pastor Anna here. Hey, we want to ask you something. Would you like us to pray for you? If you have a prayer request, something you want us to agree with you to ask God for, email us at kids at lifesourcechurches.com. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We love you guys and we want to pray for you. So have a great week. Thank you.